Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on the basic water physics within the game Satisfactory. So here we're going to look at different examples of what works and what doesn't work and so that you can potentially move on to having successful layouts like this you see before you with uh, 28 coal uh, generators producing over 2000 gigawatts of or 2000 megawatts of power for your plant. So let's get down to it. So here we have our first example. This is the most ideal situation where the actual outlet or what you're supplying is on the same level as the extractor. So if we connect this up here and start kicking in power you'll notice straight away your rings here in the middle of the pipe. These are your pressure rings and flow rings, flow rate rings. So if we watch this here, you you notice that they'll start expanding. So our pressure is increasing, and you'll notice the rings are starting to move also, which means the flow rate. So your flow rate here between is up uh, 10, 110, 112. And you get and you see the flow rings here increasing more as the amount of water increases. So when this is full, the rings will push out their max width. And you can also see here as well, there's water on the pipe, so these are blue. Um, with other later game mechanics, with when you work with oil and all the other fluids, these will be different colours depending on the fluid you're carrying. So you can see now the pipe is fully full, the rings are fully expanded, and you can see there's a flow rate from our right to the left here through the pipe. And it's filling up this reservoir fluid buffer here. You can see in here, so the flu buffer you have a fill rate, 130, and net rate here. So it's basically the difference between your fill rate and drain. Now, I'm not sure why it's showing a drain rate, because I've nothing coming off it. <laughs> but yeah, that's the most ideal situation. Now next we move on to the next one. So this is our next example here of an incline. Now, for inclines, I recommend straight up inclines. When you're dealing with slopes, long slopes, I think they're harder to calculate and manage because you don't know exactly the height you're lifting. The current extractor has a max head lift, so a max height lift at 10 meters. Now this is currently 10 meters, so that's 4, 8, and 10. That's a half foundation. So that's 10 meters max from head to inlet. Again, if we connect this one here, you notice as it kicks in, the rings will start expanding first of all. There's the rings expanding. You can see the flow rate being generated. Now you can see there's not a large flow rate to begin with because the pressure hasn't built up. But as the pressure builds up, the flow rate increases. And you notice here the top rings are start also starting to expand and the flow rate is increasing as well into our fluid buffer. Now this will continue to increase until it hits max and until the actual tank fills up completely. Now you can see here we have an inflow rate of 100. Now as the pressure builds in this part of the pipe it will increase. So there's a flow rate of 110 here, 20. See it's slowly increasing here now. And as you notice that the pipes do you want to hit with max? Yeah, they're at the max capacity. Now they're hitting the flow rate of 120. Now this is at a 10 meter rise off your extractor. So this is the highest you can have your lift from your extractor to your feed is 10 meters. Now if you notice over here this is a lot higher than 10 meters. <coughs> so we look at the next example in regards of lifting higher than 10 meters. So this is our example here. This is head lift of lifting 12 meters. So again we'll connect it up. The pump will kick in and you immediately start and expand it. Now it won't expand this quick when you first connect it but it's only expanding this because I've already tested each of these layouts and looked at the results so I can best portray it to you. So there was already a reserve of water within the actual pump. Now this is interesting here. So the max head lift is 10 meters but yet we're getting a supply on 12 meters. But there is a downside. You'll notice that the pressure isn't as good. So your fill rate here is a lot lower than it would be 
at 10 meters. So effectively you're pumping out 120 out of your extractor, but you're not getting 120 where you're feeding it. So you're losing pressure. Even if you look at the pipe here, look at the flow rate has dropped to 90, 80. It all depends on the on how much it can fill and the pressure you put it under. So if you try and lift it over 10 meters, 12 meters, you're going to lose some of that pressure. And you don't want to be losing that. That's what causes massive fluctuations in large setups like this. You want a consistent power. If you look at my power, it's completely consistent. And I this whole my whole plant runs on coal power. It's completely consistent because my flow of my water within my plants is completely consistent so I don't try and push the boundaries of my uh, pump system. Now our next rig here is 4, 8, 12, 16 meters of head lift. Connect it up and let's see what happens. So again the rings start expanding straight away. The pump will start filling. Now if you notice here, full pressure, no flow. So the pipe is full, but there is zero flow within that pipe. Look, the pipe is actually, well, practically full. Zero flow rate. If we go up to our tank upstairs, nothing. So at this point, we have hit max in regards how high we can lift our water. Now the next step for this point is to attach a pump. So we get a pump here, we attach that, and if you notice there is an arrow. See the green, the blue arrow? So it's a case of making sure you have your flow way on the width. Now from the stream that was on last, from one of the stream Tuesdays, they had one of the actual uh, developers who was involved in this. He said the ideal setup is to have your first pump at the bottom. We connect this up. And the pump starts kicking in. You can see the flow rate now has kicked in. And we'll take a look from back here. You can see upstairs as well, the flow rate has kicked in. That's because this has increased our head lift from 10 meters to 20. So going by what the engine, the software developer, the, the gentleman who was involved in the development of water systems and pipes he advised to have your first pump on the very bottom of your junction here you can see now we have a full flow rate so it's pushing out full pipes head lift is 19.1 now that's at max so at that point then we've hit a point where we're looking at it's 20 meters and even now it's saying head lift exceeded so now you can see the flow rates dropping off drastically because again it's exceeded its head lift. We probably notice that upstairs the flow rate is starting to slow down. So at this point all you do is take away your pump place it slightly higher. Or place it higher now remember it again, the actual pump system here has a head lift of 10 meters. Now you, you don't want to push that. So again our head lift has dropped off. It's increasing again. Now is it going to ex exceed? If it exceeds then we have to change it again. Now the flow rate could be kicking off actually, might be advisable to maybe we will flush the full network. And what that does is completely removes all the water from the system so we get a fresh test. So again it's filling. Head lift is good. Flow rate's good. The upstairs you can see the rings are expanding. And it's a flow rate upstairs. Again, all these systems are trial and error, so you'll find what works and what doesn't work. But with pumps, it's just a case of adjusting the actual height. So we leave that running, 
and then we move on to our last example here this is a 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 head lift this is going to require a lot more pumps now I already know that this is going to fail so what I'm going to do, start doing is I'm going to start putting pumps on so we get our first pump on there which is grand We last uh, let the system get filled up, the pressure in the pipe build up. We check the pipe here is full. Flow rate's dropping off. If you look at our head lift, we've exceeded it. Then we add another pump. Now it's important not to do this. Pumps only give you head lift from 20 meters from the top of the pump. So if I place that one there, I'm just adding 20 meters from here. I'm not adding 40 because the two pumps in row. So we take that off and I'm going to place it roughly about, I'll put it 10 meters above it. So now you can see the head lift has decreased here. We connect this one up to power, get it working. So now the head, head lift on this pump has decreased to 15.5. Now we'll head up and we'll take a look at the other pump. This pump here head lift is also 15.5 so now we're at a point where it's actually reaching the top if I can, oop. oh that was unexpected so we'll stick a ladder on this side here just stick it in there So now we see full rings, full flow rate, and this is a lift of 24 meters. So again, it's just a case of when, if you're lifting above the limit, oop, is to just add pumps, but make sure to have space between your pumps, not to just pile them all together and expect, because you're four pumps in a row, they should be lifting for 60 meters. But the main thing I took from the stream the last day with the developer who worked on this system was having your first pipe here at the junction and that creates an actual system where your fresh shows 20 meters from here so once you exceed that you must put a second pump on and a third pump as needed but for me my own personal preference is vertical pump lines go straight up and that way then you can easily regulate and you can see in regards distance how far you have to go. Now these pipes you can lay them down for up to 50 meters at a time so technically you could go up 50 meters before it asks you for another support and then that's just a different story. <laughs> that just complicates it even more but my advice would be to do a system like this. Bring it up as high as the pipe will go. You can see now the full system is filled up the pumps have stopped. So my advice would be bring it up as high as it can go regards pipe wise level it off and then start again and do a second so do this step over and over again until you get to as high as you need and now lastly I'm going to give you a quick tour of my power plant over here and how it's set up so here we are in the middle of my power plant again this is pushing out over 2000 megawatts or 2 gigawatts of power running off 12 water extractors now each of these water extractors are actually underclocked. Show you here. Well, it should be underclocked. This one hasn't. That's one I missed. Did I miss them all? Just I missed a few of them. But so the maximum capacity of our pipes, our limiting factor in our systems, are our pipes. So the pipes are maxed out at 300 meters cubed of water. So this is the max amount you can get through your system at any one time. Now if you notice here, even though there's pumping, there's 360 being forced into the pipes, I'm only getting a flow rate of 150, 180. Now that's due to this the amount of power that I've been used upstairs. So I have each of these connected in. I should have them underclocked to uh, just 100 meters cubed of water a minute. These are pushing into a buffer here. I have a buffer in all of my systems. This is just to take 
any fluctuation in the pressure or water away from the system. I have two pumps. Now I didn't lift the second one higher because they're going into the roof. But the first pump pushes it up, second pump gets it up upstairs, up to the power plant. And these are done on modular. So this side here runs this side upstairs. The same, so forth, so on, so forth. So we head upstairs. Upstairs then you can see each of these. You can see it does glitch to the floor. So each of these pipes then feed another buffer upstairs. And then this buffer here then pushes it all down between all of these coal generators. Now these are underclocked to 75%. The reason for that is your 300 water will power 6.8 six or six point eight generators so that's one two three four five six seven now instead of overclocking one of the generators i put seven on and underclock them to only be using a max of three hundred water per minute when at max speed so again that's your limiting factor is your pipes so each pipe at max load can power six point eight generators if you want to run seven generators, you run them at 75%. And that will reduce the flow, the target megawatts and the consumption here. So each of these consume 36 meters cubed of water. That by seven is 300. So that's my tutorial. I hope you gained some information for it and you learned something from this. Now this is only the flow rate in regards water. Um, I have in my own world here, I have not tried and tested and pushed the boundaries of the oil or any of the other liquids yet. Uh, when I get to that stage, I will probably do another tutorial video when I fully understand on how the mechanics work. Again, it's about understanding. The main things to take away from this, first of all, each extractor only produces 120 meters cubed of water per minute. Your max pipe capacity is 300 per minute, so technically Underclock three extractors, and you can produce push through 100 or 300 into each pipe. The max lift for an ex uh, a water extractor is 10 meters comfortably. If you start to exceed that, you start getting slight problems. If you want to add more lift to it, you add a pump. You monitor your pump depending on your placement, as advice from the stream from the actual programmer who developed this system. He advised place your first pipe at the very bottom and then work up from there but again it's tried and tried don't just slap them on and expect it to work place your first pump on see what happens place the second pump on see what happens and keep monitoring your system until you actually get it working the system is not as straightforward as belts it's a trial and error you get you test it and you get working what you need working but again that's the end hope you've liked the tutorial if you like it hit that like button if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget that subscribe, and we'll see you later. Slán!